Kevin Goins is a transformational speaker and coach who has facilitated the development of thousands of international leaders, speakers, coaches, and authors on the ability to speak and connect with audiences and teams through story. He's partnered with several multi-million dollar organizations as well as through speaking and also trains private clients and groups to achieve this. But it didn't start out that way. After graduating as a pharmacist and excelling through leadership throughout the industry, Kevin began his speaking journey investing in speaking organizations to hone in his style and brilliance with introspective messages that tended to garner that all too familiar hmm from the audience when a certain point was made. From there, he went on to partner with organizations to maximize the value of results-based speaking and connection through storytelling to drive home relevant points that the audience could both use and implement immediately. Now he speaks and trains both corporations and clients, helping them master the art of storytelling in order to skyrocket productivity and connection from the inside out with their teams and audience. Let's welcome Kevin Going. Hi everyone, Dr. Brittany Tickland White here, your brilliant solutionist and executive coach consultant for high achieving, highly ambitious women and some few great men. And I'm also an executive coach consultant for the elite. I'm super excited to have Mr. Kevin here, who's going to share just a little bit about himself, but we're going to jump right into it because you have heard all the amazing things about him. And I met Kevin, I don't even remember exactly when, I just seen him around. <laughs> <laughs> and I think because we got into this program together is when I really, really connected with Kevin. And I was like, yes, we need some, some male energy into this tribe because I realized that the things that I help women with, I'm learning that I can also help men as well. And that is so exciting. And then having uh, male energy into this community so that I love building connection with people because even though I know a lot of things, I don't know all the things. So I love to stay connected with people who also have value to give. And Kevin is a great resource and we'll get more into that. So Kevin, share a little bit, just a little bit about yourself and then we're gonna get right into this conversation. Well, I love what you said about uh, women and sometimes helping a few good men. I was helped by a strong woman, Lisa Nichols. She's uh, the co-author of The Secret. And um, she helped me with speaking in some kind of way after me developing my own gift, so to speak, I kind of started working with her in her community, coaching people on how to speak, tell a story. Now I do my own, I have my own clients while I still work with her. So it's really exciting. Uh, women, you, you're strong, you're <laughs> love you to death. <laughs> yes, we love hearing that, especially from if you are just listening, a strong black man. So we will take all that we can get. So you may have heard this, Kevin, maybe not, but my tagline is embrace your brilliance and expand your life. So when you hear that phrase, what comes to your mind? When I hear embrace your brilliance, um, this is a challenge for people, but what I love about it is everybody has something very unique. Now, honestly, depending on our backgrounds, on our upbringing, or maybe even who was the one who brought us up, sometimes we don't always see that. But if we sit back and listen, I guarantee everybody's been given a compliment on something. Perhaps you're, man, when you talk, you inspire me or, boy, you can sell anything the way you show up. So if we all listen to it, when I hear embrace your brilliance, what is that thing that everybody compliments us on, whether we tend to believe it, embrace it or not? That's what I believe with embrace your brilliance is. Oh, I love that. And then what about the part to expand your life? How do you think brilliance play into that? The expand your life piece is beautiful. So with embracing your brilliance, what I'm hearing is there's nothing we have to do except just take what we already have and just own it. We don't have to say it's not there. We don't have to try to overdo it. Just say, this is who I am. I am it. But now to expand your life was even more beautiful. Something I do when I help people uh, with speaking and even just getting over the fear of resistance when they show up on camera. How do you take the brilliance of who you are, no matter what you may think it looks like, and then as you learn, coach, invest in different ways, your time, your energy, your money, so that you can now look at your life at how you, at, you know, where it is right now, and just really multiply by taking the brilliance that you have and actually putting it with intention into your life. That way it's not just, I go to work, I come home. Now you can begin to live and work with purpose. Exactly. I love that being intentional. I know when I looked at some of the things Kevin had, he has own your brilliance and I have like embrace your brilliance. And I love that because sometimes people can 
think of something like, oh, somebody has my idea or I don't want to do my part because someone is already doing it. And that's a lack mentality. And we had a conversation not too long ago. We won't say their name, but it's another person <laughs> out there. <laughs> Yes. Who talks about brilliance and it's so funny. Like Kevin is like full on helping people to like speak. I am a speaker and getting more out there. And this person is like out there, out there. So I just thought, there. <laughs> so I just thought no. it was funny. Like the three of us still talk about brilliance, but yes. our, our approach to that, I think is fascinating. And I think that's a form of expansion as well. So if you are listening and if you want to jump on the brilliance train, please do not allow this conversation to stop you because it is more than enough. <laughs> we can't touch Absolutely. everybody. We can't touch everybody. Yes. So when I, from my experience and research and things like that, because that's what I do. I research, I case study myself. I do case study other people. Sometimes they don't, they don't really know, but it's there. And I realized that there are two types of brilliance. There's okay. a learned brilliance and there's a born brilliance. Now I have my been on it, but I want to hear your thoughts and I'll just give you a, an overview. So what I see learned brilliance as like a, a, a talent, mm -hmm. you probably went to school for it, or it was developed in some way. And born brilliance is your unique gifts. I say divine God created downloads like that is you. So again, I say born brilliance are like what you're born with your gifts, learn brilliance typically maybe what you went to school for or a talent that you um, developed. So what are your thoughts on that um, of learned brilliance and born brilliance? Well, born brilliance is, um, what is that thing that you do well that nobody else can do like you? In fact, um, many people may be doing it already, but when you actually put your intention to it, you really just lean into it, it becomes your own. Um, when I was younger, mine was speaking and motivating people. I didn't know how I did it, but when I was not thinking, that was not intentional. That's when I would hear, oh my God, I'm motivated when you speak. When I tried to, I couldn't quite get it. Yeah. So also when I hear uh, learn brilliance, one of the things I actually had to learn with my gift personally, I knew how to do it without intention, which means if I was in my element, I'm just thinking, working, talking, and leading people, things were happening and they were motivated. But when I actually had to try to do it on purpose, Dr. Vinita, it, it just, it didn't, it didn't work at all. So I really needed to go with a coach and kind of help me learn how to see what I was doing so that what, what came out as a gifting could now come out as skill. Oh, that's a different twist on that. I do love that because I do see them as totally different. And then I do sometimes think that we focus a lot more on our learned brilliance and we forget about the gifts and talents that we have that we were born with. But I do love how you said that I do have a gift and what's more powerful is when that gift can be cultivated and yes. sharpened. And I, I like that. I'm going to have to use that. So okay. thank you for that. Um, can you tell me a time where you, I mean, I love that example that you gave about speaking, but can you think of, I mean, I know you heard the bio, his background is in pharmacy. So I'm going to lead with that. Can you think of a time where you leaned more on what you learned instead of your natural born gifts? Okay. So in school for me, it was easy. So I came out with A's. I didn't have to even try. So, uh, what happened, my, how would I put this? I was really good as, as being a pharmacist, but that honestly was still not necessarily my brilliance. My brilliance came through communication. Now what I, I did do this, I, I read a lot of books on communication while I was as a pharmacist. So because I knew how to communicate and target, plus that was part of the gifting, mm -hmm. it, it allowed me into spaces other people couldn't understand how'd you get here. Uh -huh. I'll give an example. I was at a, a, a building where we had like 250 pharmacists and there was 600 support staff. I was there for 72 days and got promoted on probation. Oh, wow. Messed up everybody. I had a few people quitting and they were really upset because what you just said, the, a lot of them were extremely skilled with their brilliance of the talent of mm. doing the job. But I'm going to be honest, for me, it was not brilliant enough because you were just a great subject matter expert for me. Yeah. And what happened, let me tell you what happened. In the interview, they literally asked me this question. They said, this person has been here for nine years. The wife of that person has been here for 12 years. And this one's been here for seven. And they are so good. They know everything about this job. Why, since they're so brilliant, why should we give it to you? I said, I'm so glad you asked. 
I said, there's three types of pharmacists and may I help you with that? Wait, said, wait, sure. wait, wait, that was a real <laughs> question. They that was a real question. That was wow. a real, and, I, and I, because it came a little salty, I had to really put my brilliance on this. Cause remember I'm communication, uh -huh. but I was studying and I, at this time I kind of knew who I was. I said, um, first off the fact that I'm here on 72 days of probation probably says something. So the three types of pharmacies that we have, we've got those that love to dispense medication in the community. We need those. They're going to be at your chain pharmacies throughout the uh, neighborhoods. Then you have your ones that are actually clinicians. They work at hospitals. They work with doctors. I said, but then you have a group that's like me. And they said, well, who are you? I said, I'm the guy who runs them both. They are subject matter experts in their brilliance. But who I am, my job is to help you get a result hit the metrics, exceed the metrics, make sure that people love what they're doing. And at the end of the day, when we finish, we can now hit the targets that the corporate needs without me having to necessarily make a friend or not. That's my job. I take their brilliance and make their brilliance work for you and us and for those numbers. That's who I am. Shock the floor. And I had a guy running in the bathroom going, he was like, oh my God, oh my God, I was so excited about your, uh, your interview. I said, Thank you, but right now we're at the stalls. Let's finish this and we'll, 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 we'll continue this conversation outside. So that's what brilliance can do for you. <laughs> I love that. That goes into the part where I wanted to um, ask and you already answered it about can you, do you need both? And you just gave a perfect example of where both are needed. If you're, you're a gift born with communication and talking with people, but you learned the skill of pharmacy and you allowed your gift to make room for your, your talent. And I think a lot of times, especially highly ambitious, high achievers, top performers, we rely so much on that. I love subject matter um, expertise. And I didn't know anybody else used that outside of the education space because we say, what's your subject matter? What's your expertise? So I, I, know, didn't, right? I didn't know like it crossed over, <laughs> so that's cool. But yeah, we, we focus so much on being subject matter experts and it served us well, but that's not our true brilliance. That's like um, the researcher who does the zone of genius. That's just your zone of excellence. Yes. And, and if, can I chime in on this one? Yeah. Just, I saw your eyes when you went, <gasps> when I started running them both. Now I'm being a little sh uh, short here because we have just a short amount of time, but mm -hmm. I did have a resume, which uh, I, we didn't talk about. And when I said I run them both, what, what happened was they actually had the resume in front of them and it actually had that I read 65 books on leadership within 52 weeks. Mm, Meaning that okay. there was some weeks I was reading two and three books on leadership and I had a ton of conferences within a year. So what I meant by the running them both, I'm a leader, not mm -hmm. just a subject matter expert. So my brilliance was actually a little bit higher because I lead and create vision. Does that make sense? It does. And it goes into what I talk about my, my approach, my, my new method that I'm focusing on going from resume to reinvention. And we talked about the framework is your skill optimization, your time optimization, your energy optimization, your ambition optimization, and your money optimization. And all of that is how to maximize your, your brilliance. So within that, I, I thought I had you under leadership. I knew I had you under skill for sure. And I probably did leadership. So I'm glad you, you talked about that. So I want, this is the time you can expand more on that because again, perfect example of going from resume and I am big on, you need to tighten up your skill set, And, but then you did a reinvention part as to where it's like, well, don't let the resume fool you. This is what it looks like off paper. So give us a little bit more about that. Well, one of the things I did, I, I, I noticed in healthcare, because, how would I put this? We're, we're employees on a higher scale. So as a pharmacist, yes, you're going to make decisions. Yes, you're going to correct doctors. Yes, you're going to fix uh, prescription errors. And then you give recommendations. So you're seen as a leader in the community. But in my opinion, we're still high priced employees at the top. So I knew that if I were really going to, since we're talking about brilliance, really develop my brilliance and I, what I love more than anything was leadership and communication, I had to invest in myself outside of what the company did. So our in pharmacy is not really huge that they invest a lot in customer service. It's not huge that they invest a lot in leadership. What happens with us is whoever is kind of the best clinician who has the most clinical knowledge tends to be the one who goes to the top. But I was able to cut through a lot of that because 
I saw early on, my communication was what I love. So I learned what I needed clinical wise, but because of my communication and how I was able to really help them navigate uh, at the leadership level, the metrics and exceeding them, I was able to get in rooms that people would go, how'd you get here? I don't understand. You, 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 you can't do that. I said, oh, I've yes. heard that because <laughs> I'm studying outside of just pharmacy itself. Does that make sense? It, it makes it makes perfect sense. And I don't think a lot of people realize that I used to get that question asked a lot and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how I got into rooms, but you said it. Not only was I great at my skill set, but I stepped outside of that and said, well, what other things can I develop? What else can I learn about my industry to put me above? Now, I don't think it was really intentional. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was like, okay, this isn't enough. <laughs> exactly. So and you I'm know, glad that you're naming it. We yes. sound different when we do that. I'll never forget. I was on a conference call. Um, I still work part time as a pharmacist and they asked me to lead a call. And when I spoke, it literally shut the call down in a way that I had people direct messaging me and calling me right going, who are you? Wow. You sound like a leader more than other people. Because what <laughs> they were trying to say was you don't sound the same. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've been like me for the last five, six years investing in, actually not, that's longer than that, probably 10 to 12 years investing <laughs> in communication, speaking, leadership, going deep into fundamentals, my vocabulary and how I sound is not the average same thing that people say on a call. You can hear every call tends to, they, they say the same words mm -hmm. over and over again. And it's not a bad thing, but sometimes I, I wish that people could expand their awareness so that their vocabulary could go with it. I love that you said expand your awareness because that is also part of expand your life. I love talking about practical examples. My mom was a practical teacher. I taught mathematics because that's a practical thing that I can look at. So I love that the examples that you're giving are actual examples of what it can look like to use your brilliance and expand your life. And that leads to this next part of, we always hear this term of next level. And, and I say it a lot, I was like, go to your next level, go to your next level, because it's the thing to say, but it's like, what is it? <laughs> like, what is a next level? It is so abstract. So in your story, you gave me an example, but I want to hear like your thoughts about what is a next level like a practical way to say oh this is what it can look like or feel like for anybody who's struggling with next level may i invite you to consider this what scares you the most that you know you should be doing that perhaps you're not doing today if we all get quiet uh, everybody has a fundamental thing that they know they could be doing they have some type of vision whether we're working on it or not or whether we put it down because we got relationships we got kids all these jobs but if we sat back i, I guarantee everybody kind of knows what the le next level means here's one example my mom was also a teacher and i love what she did but when i saw her i said mom i'm a teacher too but you're broke. I was nine years old. I said, mama, you're broke. I'm not going to be a teacher like you. I'm going to be a teacher of humanity. Now, after I get smacked off the floor and picked my lips up of because course. I was being smart, Alec, I knew, Renita, I was, Dr. Benita, I was going to be just like her. I was going to teach, but I was not going to be limited to a box. Mm -hmm. I was going to speak to the world in my own way. I didn't know what that looked like, but that would mean I would have to move past I kind of grew up shy, so I had, to, I had to move past being shy. That's what I mean. We have a tendency to know what it is. I had to yeah. put myself out there, and I knew I was going, going to be uncomfortable as I allowed my brilliance to unfold, but it was not going to be different than the thing I've always been uh, complimented on. You inspire me, meaning mm -hmm. that it was just going to take the inspiration of you inspired me from family and friends, and now it's going to multiply to strangers and other people so that more can shine in the brilliance that was given to me. So when people struggle with that word next level, I have a feeling we all tend to know it. It's just that part that scares us that we may be resistant to try. Yes, I'm glad you said that we know it. And this is going to get into the next part. But I think sometimes the smarter we are, the more intelligent we are, the more learned we are. And I don't know about you, but what I was going through, even my master's level, the other degrees, especially my PhD, it was like, well, you really don't know. And I always had to prove. And that caused me to second guess myself a lot. And I don't know if that works in a lot of high achievers. It's like, well, that's why I focus on my performance because you can see it, but turning internally, well, so many people were like, you can't trust yourself or you don't know. That's what we, they, they used to tell us that in doc school all the time you don't have enough knowledge to to use your words so if you wrote it it's not true 
Oh, I, oh, 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 this is why we're going to get into that next question about coaching <laughs> and personal yeah, development. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's true. It's like, so it was like for so long, yes, the answers are inside of us, but so many external factors can tell us, you know, not to listen. So I'm glad you said we do know. We just have to make sure we listen. So earlier you talked about you invested, you're invested in yourself. And I want you to talk a little bit more about that. What, you know, I can ask a direct question, but I want people to, when you say investing, what do you mean by that? Okay, great. In fact, it's going to tie into your next level question because something just came to me that I think I'm going to highlight for people so they can see a little more clearly. Um, Oprah Winfrey said, I saw it on a show back in 2000, 2001. Oprah said she has four coaches. Mm -hmm. I said, well, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You run the Oprah Winfrey show and you have four coaches. You're like the biggest person out there. And you're, mm -hmm. so when I heard her say that, that let me know if I don't have one, the mind that got me here, great job, Kevin, but what's going to keep me moving forward so that as we say in your tagline, not only can I embrace my brilliance, but how do I embrace it and then expand what I just exactly. embraced? That's what a coach does. So when I said earlier that we tend to know what's happening is this. Uh, Dr. Vanita, we have a self-esteem and then we have the performance. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens with our learned individuals because this happened to me. Sometimes we marry the two together and we think because I can perform well and I get all these degrees, I am that esteem. Yep. So if I do a good grade, hi, I'm happy. If I do a bad grade, oh my God, I'm bad. Those, that's the most awful thing we can do mm -hmm. is merge our performance, which is external mm -hmm. from the esteem, which is internal. Exactly. So when I said that we kind of know what I meant was the brilliance really lies in the esteem, just who you are and how you came to the planet, not your performance. Mm -hmm. So for all my learned um, educator, edu look, educated people, yep. we can increase our performance. But even if I don't have a esteem of communication, my esteem is I am. That's enough. Mm -hmm. But if I can get a skill set to perform, what well, great for me. It just helps me out, but it doesn't touch the esteem. My exactly. esteem is what it is. So if we keep the two separate from esteem or your person versus the performance of what you do, then we can actually really begin to own and go to the next level. Because the next level may be, yeah, you may have to perform a little bit better, but it's more about, can I really tap more into my esteem of who I am and let more of my vulnerability and brilliance show from the esteem perspective, not the performance one. This just enhances me, but this one defines me. Esteem exactly. defines, performance just enhances what I do. Exactly. I think that's great. And I want to talk, like, what was your, your moment? I know like Oprah, you know, we all love her and it's like, yes, yeah, she said that, but there was something that had to get you to even open your mind up to coaching. Because if you're like me, like you have all this academic knowledge and it was like, wait a minute, I had to work hard by myself for myself this whole time. You mean I need somebody else <laughs> to help me? So what was that moment to open up your mind about this world of coaching? Well, I saw this lady online. She actually came across my iMac and she really made me kind of mad. Um, she asked me two questions. She said, and as far as I'm concerned, she said, Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> how long will you sit on your dreams? That was question number one that irritated me crazy. And then what will it cost you? Those two questions, what a good coach would do are a good coach is supposed to irritate us. So if we're going to really get a really good transformation, we can't be comfortable because they're not going to change anything. She brought me to the place of irritation. And for me, Dr. Vanita, that's where I set my dream down. See, when I became a pharmacist, I only did that because I knew I could communicate. I knew I was smart, but I never seen anybody speaking. And I grew up shy and I was even bullied when I was younger. So I didn't believe myself. So though I had this dream, I was like, I don't think nobody's going to believe me. So I put a white jacket on top of purpose, put my head down and just learned. And I said, I'm going to wow. promote up do pharmacy yeah. so that I could run from the part that I knew I should be working on. Wow. So when I went to this conference, this woman asked me these two questions first on my computer that made me fly halfway across the country. <laughs> I saw her and I saw she was on stage. And this is what I said. Oh my God, God. And I was talking to God. I said, God, there's greatness. That's the greatness in me. Now she's doing hers, but like, how dare you live your life out loud you're out here just being all you can be. And I come here judging people. I came shut down and withdrawn, judging because I saw them winning and I was wishing I did. Yep. So when I saw this woman living her life out loud. I knew 
what I did got me as far as I could go, but I could never go further unless I, I met somebody like that and worked with them so they could show me how to look at the brilliance that I had, plus what I didn't understand that I did have and tap into more so I could really embrace it and expand it. I love that. I think a lot of times for those of us who are, and my people are super achievers, that's, those are the people I attract. And it's like, we think we have to learn more and more and more and consume but I think people mess, mess up. And I, as, an, as a trained educator, and I'll say born educator, I don't think I realize this, that the true purpose of educating is to draw out. So it's like you want to, when you get around someone who can draw out of you, I think that's when it's like, oh my gosh. And I think a lot of us high achievers, we don't, we don't get around enough people that draw out because they can look at our performance and say, oh, you're fine. You're good. And it's, depending on where you are either you're like well I guess so or you get frustrated and it was like no something is off but I just don't know what and what I hear you saying is that she drew something out of you and caused yes. your irritation and here's something here's why because this is something and for all my learned people out there if you're kind of like me now you may not be to my extreme because I was bullied so I really came with a low self-esteem when I went into uh, education I mean science because I knew I could just maximize it mm -hmm. but what I found because I have clients that come to me too when I start pulling back the curtain and asking why are you not able to go live why, why are we not able to really be seen the educated people like me we tend to hide behind education and put more and more and more and more and more on so we don't have to look at these deficiencies in our esteem <laughs> and who we really are so we're hiding behind white jackets we're hiding behind more degrees in the thermometer but who are you and half of us can't answer that question. Yep. That's what I mean by esteem. So what I, what I love more than anything is what I help people do is get away from all the stuff you just learned and now let's unlearn everything you just thought you learned so we can get back to the core of you and see you. Now, if you just wanna wear one of those labels to your party or you wanna wear one and put it on your wall, that's fine, but you are not your label. So us learned people have to go and unlearn all the stuff we did, not to throw it away, but right. to see us. And what she did, I went there hiding behind a white jacket and she saw me and said, uh-uh. Oh, uh -uh. wow. You may be the biggest fish over in that little bitty pond. You're in the world now. And I see you hiding. Come out, come out wherever you are, Kevin. Come out, come out wherever you are. And it challenged me because I never had that many people around where I had to intentionally help someone else on stage. It scared me to, to death, but it also liberated me. Oh, I love that. Yes. So that's the that's the important part. And this is why I'm strategic about who I talk to, because a lot of people won't call us out. They'll see our titles. They'll see our white coat. They'll see whatever they want to see, but they will not call us out. And it takes a special type of person. <laughs> One that knows their esteem. Exactly. That's perfect. And so I'm glad you said that. And you talked a little bit throughout about how you help people but now I want you to directly tell people exactly what you do because you know we've heard of steam we heard a little bit about going live on camera we talk you know so now I want you to just go in and lay it all out and then tie it into why what you do is important for okay. the, the the person to embrace their brilliance and expand their life so I'm in a lot of different groups in fact I just had a call earlier today brilliant gentleman but wrote books and all kinds of things. And I asked, why are you not out there? And I'm getting all these reasons. I can look bookshelf just full of knowledge, head just, he, he knows everything. Like I'm thinking, my God, I don't know if I can even hold a conversation with all the things that you have read, but where he couldn't hold a candle, which is where I was inviting people. Mine are just as learned as yours in some instances. But what I find is that um, just showing up and being vulnerable. People that are now really rested in their esteem of who they are, we can see people who, who are not. And that's why it doesn't matter how many degrees we have, you come on one hand loaded with the external, but your internal is empty. And all the internal people that are checked in and dialed in can see mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. So what I help people do literally is we do storytelling and going live, but more importantly, there's some resistance coaching I love to do first so they can see who they are. In fact, mine is called owning your brilliance. The other guy has own your brilliance. I have owning with an ing. Oh, that's, that's what he has. He has oh. owned your brilliance. Oh, and, okay. And and I met with him. I hugged him. He said it's okay. I'm not going to try to go against you. So I've, I've I've seen him at the Dallas Speakers Bureau. We're good. Okay, okay. <laughs> but owning your brilliance because these people are so beautiful. You're beautiful. You know everything. I help you also own the parts that you hate. Own the parts that you're ashamed of. Own the parts where you think. 
well, mom and them did this to me and I don't like what, you know, I grew up in a project. So let me get over here and now be so, you know, labeled up. But it's like, no, 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 no. That part was also part of your story. And let's look at how that has helped shape who you are today. I had a client that flew down earlier this year and um, I kept listening. And so it was so funny, no matter how much we tried to work, I recognized we got to get that heart. She was so into her head and she was really a phenomenal person with all the skill sets and the brilliance. <laughs> but the esteem hadn't touched it yet and never has been challenged. Mm -hmm. So when I, <laughs> she made this comment about her past in a way that was like, are you throwing shade on your past? I said, don't throw shade on your past and everybody else over there because don't forget where you came from. <laughs> and we that went part. there. And the more I started challenging and going there because East Coast is a little bit different than, the, you know, we're Southern hospitality, nice. East Coast, they like a direct. When I started going direct and really being real and being a mirror for her, that's carefrontation. And she saw what she was doing. And for the next several hours, just cried and cried and, and recognized why her inner brilliance could not match her outer. So guess what? All of our degreed people, we could be so high on degrees, but inside we're almost suicidal and almost mm -hmm. want to commit death because we're going, something's missing. I don't know what it is. I can't, it's you that's missing. And that's what we had to do is uh, unlock her so she could find herself and finally own it. So the inside matches the outer. See, I told y'all I wasn't crazy when I tell y'all to go get coaches <laughs> and look at your core values and who you be on the inside. Because I say we teach, lead, and serve who we are. And if you showing up jacked up, it's because your inside are yeah, jacked it is. up. Yes. So thank you for, for, for sharing that. And I do love what you do about helping people get their story out and their message. And I want to make sure people understand it's not about everyone doesn't have to be an on-stage speaker now mm -hmm. I can say this but I want it to come from you everyone doesn't have to be an on-stage speaker but why is it important for them to know their story and share it or or better question like what are some different ways to do that that's a better question okay um well I, I do want to hit that first one the reason okay. why people really want to um know why you want that when you start inspiring teams, when you start touching humanity, you cannot inspire those who cannot see you. Mm. So the way we tell our story is not just, you know, you airing out your dirty laundry. There's <laughs> actually a system and a framework. And what it does is it allows us to see your brilliance, the way Dr. V says she has in her, her, uh, her uh, tagline. You can see the brilliance. We can also see the time when you were not brilliant. We can see when you were completely at the bottom. And then we, there's a way on you can tell the lessons learned how you got out of what you went through. Because when you can do that, now we see not just your degrees and all who you are, because nobody respects you if that's all you show. Mm -hmm. But if you can show your humanity and you can show, I took a licking, but I kept on ticking. And let me give you three ways on how I got out of that thing. Now I can go and tell the next person, uh-uh, let me tell you why this is important because your story can now be used to not just inspire people, but to increase productivity in the workplace when you know how to do it right. So it, it's not just to be on pageantry or stage. It really can be used with the intention to move people forward if you know how to tell it in a way that showcases the brilliance when you were not that way and some lessons learned and why you do what you do today. Is that, is, yes. is helpful? that is helpful and yes. I, I do love that and the more this needs to be out and now I can see why a lot of people book you know we have a common coach <laughs> I see why a lot of people book her and yes it's true that she's a, a speaker but she's also using that to show those practical practical examples to those organizations those teams to increase productivity and things like that so look people get your skills up expand them this leads into where we're, we're wrapping up now rapid fire. I want you to give, you know, some advice from your approach in my five step framework of skill, time, energy, money, ambition and money. So your advice or what does it mean to you? What can you offer in the area of skill set? Skill set, um, increase it, read about it, study about it, invest in yourself and take yourself further than where you got here. Love it. Time. Time. Time really has no meaning. So if it's something that's really important to you, you do it morning, you do it mo noon, you do it night. You do it when nobody else is watching because the opportunity of how I got with Lisa is because I was studying behind the scenes. So when she pulled me on stage, which I didn't know was going to happen, my time behind the scenes elevated me to the top. Oh, I like that spin on time. Okay. Energy. 
energy. The energy of what it takes when you're really in your zone of genius and purpose, it begins to flow from within. It's not something external you have to put on. It becomes something that comes out of you. So as you're uh, showcasing your brilliance, tap in that purpose of what you're doing so the energy is natural and comes within. Love it. Ambition. Ambition. What I love about ambition, it drives us forward because we need things to keep moving us forward, but we want to also make sure we're temperate so that it does not go beyond purpose and into ego because nobody Ooh. likes a strong ego, but we do like somebody who's going to move forward and not just be stagnant and sit. Love it. Money. Money. We all love money. Money drives everything. Money moves everything. However, when we're doing purposeful work, money is not the driver. It's who are you really trying to impact? Is that on your list? What are you really trying to do and create? Is that on the list? That's what's going to drive people. And then the money will come and follow you. Don't chase the money. Go chase the purpose and the people and the money will follow. Perfect. And our final question, and you can share your, your honest thoughts. I want to know if you believe that brilliance is a privilege and why or why not? I do not believe brilliance is a privilege. I, I believe it's born. I believe it's already in us. Now, can we enhance it? Absolutely. That's something we can do on, on our own as we begin to expand our life. That's a choice. But that natural brilliance of how you are, your, our job is to see it, accept it, and own it, because we probably already know what it is, and then begin to harness it, tap into it, and expand it more so other people can come in there. And I got to say this too. Make sure you don't try to be perfect with it. There is no, no perfection because now you alienate yourself from everybody else, but just be okay being imperfect with your brilliance, showing up the best you can because your best will help so many other people. Wow. Well, this was great. See, this is the difference when you talk to men. <laughs> it's like they go straight to the point. <laughs> you will see on some of the other series, we, we are probably on question number three at this point. <laughs> I thought you had a timer, so I was doing my best. No, to I, I, I mean, I do tell people we have a window, but at the same time, I still love organic conversation. So it's always that balance of this is good, but. <laughs> I had your people in mind. And as you asked, yes, me, yes. I kept saying, what do they need to get with yeah, them? Not to my, show me. My people. Well, I want to show you, but you were still able to do that in our, our window. So my crew will love it. <laughs> My pleasure to Yes. Um, thank you so much, Kevin. I do have Kevin's information. I do want you all to connect with him. I know some of you have asked me about video or how to do things. And can I? Absolutely. But I don't have to. This is why I connect with other people. Someone who's actually passionate <laughs> about doing, you know, certain skill sets. So I have no shame. It takes nothing away from my brilliance to say, yeah, but I got somebody for that. And Kevin is a master at this work. He studied with, I say, the best person in the game to show up and engage into storytell. And he has his own unique service proposition. And that's the special part. He's not just a copycat or an imitation of this person, of our coach. We'll say it, it's Lisa Nichols, not an imitation. And that's what I truly love because there are a lot of people who say, well, I studied with her and I do this. And it was like, well, I could just send them to her. <laughs> exactly. I'm on the step by step by step approach so people can see that and then come in naturally as themselves. And that is, that is his unique angle because he will like Kevin will deep dive with you. So look, I don't, this is going to air soon. You better catch him now because when we blow up, he may not have time for you <laughs> to go. So yeah. Make sure you connect with him. Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your brilliance with us and all of his information will be down below. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Make sure you share your nuggets down below, your takeaways, your aha moments, something you have more questions about and we'll see if we can follow up. And as we end, I want you to remember to be well, be empowered, be bold, and be brilliant. Until next time, bye. Bye, thanks for having me. You're welcome.